hi welcome to this new part that is part 10 we will look at lake formation lake formation is a service from aws and it is used to build manage and secure data lakes in days so we have all heard about a concept of data lake we have also heard a data warehouse now what is the difference between a data warehouse and a data lake we will get into the depth but before that please hit the subscribe and the like button see a data warehouse is primarily holding 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 structured data sets so it the purpose of data warehouse is to enable reporting to enable machine learning enable advanced analytics on top of those data sets but it cannot hold cannot hold unstructured data what is unstructured data suppose you have an invoice similar to this and you want to capture these data so what will you do these are all unstructured data sets right you don't have a particular record in a database so you will use ai you will use pre-labeling of the fields and so on to get it into a format which is more readable and anal analytics can be run on top of it unstructured data sets can be in the form of documents pdf formats video files audio files and so on even images just like we saw in the example of the invoice yeah, that's an image so lake formation is for building data lakes on the aws amazon platform now one thing you should remember not all clients need to build data lakes okay so nowadays out of fashion a lot of clients says that hey i want to build a database if you uh, see your wife just because her friends have posted some photographs on facebook going abroad so she will also ask you to go abroad but their requirement and your requirements are different so you will have to clearly understand does it apply to your world and above all it's all about money can you afford it can you sell yourself sell your kidneys to afford it so can the client afford a data lake and if yes does it make sense like you can afford a mercedes benz today but what will you do out of it is it just as a status symbol or you have a particular use of it that is something which you as a client advisor need to understand and advise the clients now if you see amazon s3 you see here the data is flowing through the lake formation and the lake formation will scan label across the data sets and then you can load it in s3 or you can load it using in redshift you can use athena or you can load it in emr clusters my friend what is emr what is the purpose of that see everything has a purpose emr is for big data processing emr is for big data processing okay redshift is for holding data warehouses primarily addressing your reporting concerns you can use plug w on redshift or you know, power bi now you might say hey power bi why will i use it in aws world when i have a azure world perfectly fine with you man if you don't want to use power bi here use click sense now let us quickly see lake formation what is the use case like it helps you create a self-service analytics across your organization what what does self-service means you know if you go to marriages nobody serves you food it's self-service there is a buffet you just go there take a plate just pick whatever you want and eat you want it again go in the queue help yourself that is self-service so a lot of times in the organizations we want to reduce the load on the it teams if you are working for a captive for example for barclays bank or bank of america and so on so these are captives in india also we have captives that means you are just working on a project for barclays bank and if you are working for services industry like tcs infosys etc so you might work for different projects for different clients so that's the difference between a captive and uh, an it service company if you want to settle you're above 50 you can join a captive and relax there will be a bit of monotonous kind of work you would, might be supporting the same application for years and so on but that is what you desire you can choose that you want excitement you should join companies which are into pure it players accenture oracle microsoft and so on now the next use case is hey you know what your data is there but you want safety of that data for example if you are barclays bank you don't want tom dick and harry to be accessing your data imagine you have an account with barclays bank and 
your vegetable vendor, your BB Deli, Walmart, everybody knows that you are not a millionaire. Oh my God, what a shame. So what we do, we put like that, uh, we govern that. Whoever needs access, for example, if HR needs access, we would only give the data that they are supposed to access. If uh, finance or sales team needs access, we would just give the data sets where they are accountable and responsible for. So imagine, imagine, imagine you are a sales guy and there is no governance on the tables, fields, databases, data sets, and you can see the salary structure and, and the actual salary of so many people from across the organizations. You know, that is really not cool. Only HR are supposed to do that. Now, other important use cases, you can build a data mesh with minimum data movement. So in today's world, if anybody wants to build a data lake, what happens? They have to move the data because you already have data somewhere. You may have it in your pocket, in your pants pocket, in your ladies purses, the data is everywhere. You have to move it and put it into a locker. Consider a locker is a centralized location where all data should be there. So every money from your pocket, from the ladies purses and so on should move to this locker. That's your data lake. Once you move there, you know, oh, I am worth a million. Or you might realize that you are not worth a million and you might realize that you have to work even harder. And the other thing is, if you want to do that, you want to do it faster. In today's world, there is no patience. In today's world, there is no patience. If you see the kids who are five years old, 10 years old, etc., you will see that they have even less patience. You guys want to purchase everything on a single tip. You want to order from Swiggy on a single uh, click of a finger in seconds. If that is the case, if that is the case, you would also want that it should not take years to build data lake. You know, in the initial days, at least seven, eight years back, when we used to build data lakes, it used to take us at least a year. That was the fastest implementation. So now you don't want to wait that it should be in weeks or months. So a few things from my exam perspective that you should remember is lake formation. You can, you can import data from other external sources. It can be your on-premises databases. It can be your databases on other cloud platforms like Google, like Azure. And how do you do it? You do it using JDBC connectivities. See, lake formation is also used, for example, you have a big, big, big infrastructure, a lot of infrastructures, and you want to monitor, you want to monitor it through cloud trail right there are so much of logs generated every hour you have to store it somewhere and you have to make sense out of that why the hell are you creating logs man i know a lot of companies they just create logs that in the event something bad happens they st still have logs and they keep the archive of those logs for years and years it is just like you know you buy a tv 10 years back i i am the culprit i bought a tv 10 years back i was scanning through my documents i i even disposed of that tv i bought the third tv now but when i was looking for like different set of documents i could find that invoice and receipt as well why why the hell and what the hell will i do with that now so i disposed it off that is something which organizations will have to understand for how long we want to look and save the logs so if you want the better usages you use the log put ai put ml on top of it and see what sense these logs make does it give you a trend that someone is trying to constantly hack or someone is trying to put sql injections so that they can get hold of your data the other important thing is lake formation you can catalog and label your data what happens is lake formation crawls it crawls just like a spider spider it crawls reads your data sources and it extracts technical metadata definitions. It can sc scroll and scroll and understand, oh, what is this data? And it creates a searchable catalog. Very useful for both structured and unstructured data set. Now you as a client or you as an IT guy or a girl, you have an option. What is the option? You can custom label your data sets. You can say, oh, these data sets are sensitive. These data sets are for European sales team. You can classify them. You can label them it's up to you why do we do it you know i spoke about data governance when you are trying to ensure security of the data and governance of the data you want hr to only access the data sets that they are supposed to access this is how you will do it if you label the data like this data set only european sales team should be able to access that you you label it man 
now you have to transform the data see lake formation nothing comes in as it is you have to transform the data why because you have to marry the data marry the data what does marriage mean for example airtel in india airtel is a big isv service provider so initially they had landlines and when they started uh, cell phone services they had a cell phone database and now there can be customers who are having both airtel landline and cell phone and internet so now they have to harmonize and match this data that this customer here is same as this customer and this customer so they have to harmonize it so you, in that case some level of transformation would be required why because in the first database you may have stored the customer number as a different entity now your uh, services grew now you have customer numbers which are 16 digit earlier it was 10 digit and then you can also see that earlier there was no requirement to hold pan number and other number and now there is a requirement to hold that so you will add additional fields so that's why you need to do transformations and how do you do it you use aws glue 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 lose the etl tool in the aws world what is the etl tool in the azure world and the beauty of glue is you can write it the transform data in parquet and orc files what, what is parquet and orc parquet what we do is the reason we put it in this is because the same amount of data can be stored in lesser storage space so for example if you are able to store in a csv file uh, 100000 records and if it took like say uh, kind of 100 mb in parquet file if you still save 100000 it might take say 10 mb so it's compressed and it is faster because it stores it in a columnar format nowadays 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 the world is all about columnar the file has to be columnar the database has to be columnar so redshift is the database which is columnar parquet format is a file format which is columnar so obviously in any etl tool or any type of data movement you will clean and dedupe the data that is a common stuff and how do you do it lake formation gives you ai ml built in so that you do not have to apply your precious brains your neurons you have can be intact you don't have to worry about any of those things find matches will do that dedupe for you and then it all it also able to optimize partitions so that you know it can store the data properly and so sometimes what happens is when we are storing the data in s3 either the files are too small or these are too big so you don't have to worry because humans have no brains compared to machines so if you have less brains compared to machines let the machine do it for you so amazon aws was seeing this problem that human beings are making so many mistakes so that's why they told hey i'm going to automate even this for you and then there are low level, low level and cell level security even if somebody by chance penetrates into the network and gets access to your data sets they will my friend still not able to see what is there because of the row level and cell level security on top of it you can build encryption man you really make it difficult for the hackers okay poor hackers i don't know what the hell they will do now if you are building so much of security in the systems so even if they get access to your data suppose they were and some intelligent people who got access they cannot read it now it is encrypted and the tables these are all governed they are asset compliant that means atomic consistent isolated and durable in terms of database we always use asset compliance no sql databases they have different level of asset compliance but all rdpms database they are all purely 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 asset compliant that means what does it mean asset compliant asset is not the one that you throw on the girls in india okay not all of them some rogue people do that when they do not have capabilities to compete in the market so this asset is different what is this if you insert a record into a database and if some other person tries to select can they see the same record at the same time yes that is asset compliance but no sql databases like mongodb and so on cassandra and so on they have this kind of feature where you can put it now but it might reflect after like 15 seconds how do we provide self service access to the data you know what southwest airlines is a client who is using lake formation and why because airlines have enormous amount of data and they want to use it for 
predictive analytics to optimize, uh, sorry, to optimize the operations and save cost. See, this is the use case you will always see across different ind industries. Uh, whether it be airlines or it may be a shipping company and so on, they all say, hey, you know what? I'm using AI to optimize my operations. What does optimize my operation mean? For example, it will give you a forecast that, hey, you know what? These two flights at this time going to Coimbatore, these are overbooked, but these two flights going to Coimbatore, but at 4 p.m. in the evening or in the afternoon, they have a lot of space. Can we uh, spread the travelers? That is the kind of insight it will give you. Then you have Coho, which is a financial company, and it improves its security for its customers with more precise governance. So what they may be using? They may be using this feature. They use this feature. They would be using this feature. And then we have one football. It delivers data insights for its 70 million fans. It's kind of, you know, it's a company which provides a lot of data insights. And Investa, again, this is a manufacturing company. And what it said is it transformed its operations and optimized manufacturing outcomes with data lakes. So that, that is the usual use case in this world. So whenever people say, hey, why do I put data lake? Then we say, hey, you know what? You can plug AI on top of those data sets. You have centralized location of data sets. You can use AI and then you can use it to improve your performance of operations. So that is very important from a governance standpoint. So these all companies are also using self-service capabilities because you know you can label your data sets in the business metadata so that you don't have to provision the data. Anybody who wants access, they have access through IAM or something and they can still access the data. You can enable self-service access. You can uh, you know, help them discover relevant data for analysis all by themselves. You are going to reduce the load on your IT teams and they can use different analytics options. You can plug Python, you can plug Tableau, you can plug whatever you want for more insights. So that brings us to the end of this part. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. It takes a lot of effort to put in all of this knowledge content for you. Please, please, please focus on the concepts being explained here. I'm giving you real life examples of certain clients so that you can grasp the concept. Clearing certification is not only about, it's not only about mugging the answers and questions, but it's also about focusing on the concept. So my friends, this brings us to the end of this part. These are very useful for SAA C03 and SAP C01 and C02. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part.